şundan korkuyorum. Bir Haçlı Hilal Savaşı'na doğru bu Avusturya Başbakanı'nın attığı adımlar dünyayı buraya doğru götürüyor. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Before we start with this interesting topic, don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button and comment your opinion down below about this topic. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram so that you can take part of even more from everything about Kurdistan. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. In recent years, Turkey has in many ways expanded its foreign politics, engaging in different wars, invading different countries and threatened others. Just in the recent couple of days, we have seen escalating situations in both Armenia, Greece and Libya, one way or another connected to Turkey. But before we discuss the topic itself, we need to go through some basic stuff first. Starting with the Ottoman Empire, modern Turkey and its leader Erdogan. So let's go back to the year 1566 AD, looking at the map back then. At the time, the Ottoman Empire was at its peak. As we can see, it reached parts of modern Morocco and Algeria in the west. It went through a peak portion of Libya and also controlled all of Egypt. The Ottoman Empire occupied modern Palestine and Israel, parts of Saudi Arabia, all of Kurdistan, parts of Iran and modern Turkey and Armenia. Besides from that, Cyprus and a lot of the Balkan area was in the control of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire was without doubt big, however, as a result of World War I, the Ottoman Empire fell and the different winning states of World War I did everything to take over parts of the previous empire. Being full of different ethnicities and far away from pure Turkish, the Turks still looks at the Ottoman Empire as a Turkish concept. So when different powers from abroad united to take down the Turks, the Turkish people only got a stronger will to unite and hit back again. This happened under the command of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk during the Turkish War of Independence in the 1920s. He wanted to create a new state, Turkey, which would be founded on the foundations of nationalism and secularism. The religion of Islam, which the Ottoman Empire was living on, were now less important. Among many things, the hijab was forbidden in public places, such as schools, for example. Atatürk also made sure that the state owned all the mosques in the country. He also introduced European numbers, the alphabet of Latin and the Gregorian calendar. Islam was also soon removed from the Turkish constitution as the religion of the state. To secure the constitution, Atatürk introduced a very important part into the constitution, saying that if the constitution ever was threatened, the military had the authority to intervene in order to put everything into place again. Basically, this meant that when the Kemalism that Atatürk was introducing were threatened, the military had an obligation to intervene in order for the Kemalism to survive in the country. Since everyone seemed to be against the Turks, the Turkish people united behind Atatürk and together they made up a big resistance against the British and the French people. As the new Turkish state faced both internal conflicts with the Kurds, they also had one more less spoken conflict with the still living conservative and religious thinking of Turkey. In the beginning of the 21th century, Erdogan became the unofficial leader for this group as Erdogan and his party AKP aimed to make conservative thoughts and religious manners more important in the Turkish society. With the support from the people, Erdogan could collect votes from two main groups, the conservative and religious Turks, which was his core voters, but also the Kurds, as Erdogan in the beginning vowed for increasing influence and rights for the Kurds. This made it possible for Erdogan to take power in 2002. The first years in power, many things improved in Turkey. The infrastructure in the country improved in many ways and the religious groups were finally heard in a way never seen before. This led to a case where Erdogan could win several elections in a row without anyone questioning it. Erdogan also removed some of Atatürk's laws, for example allowing the hijab in institutions, making it harder to buy alcohol and letting the mosques open privately. However, in the last decade, Erdogan went too far and began to show signs of dictatorship, authoritarian and Islamist ruling. Among his early quotation that is highlighted due to his contradiction towards Atatürk's policy, Erdogan said that women and men can't be equal and that women were meant to be mothers. According to logic, 
this act opened up for the military to take back the power according to the constitution by Ataturk, similar to 1960, 1971, 1980, 1993 and 1997. The military of Turkey now tried to take the power from Erdogan in 2016. This coup would be the first failed one in Turkish history due to its lack of public support. Erdogan reached out to his followers through FaceTime, urging the people to get out on the streets and stop the coup. As a consequence of this failed coup, Erdogan sealed his power by purging more than 100,000 journalists, academics, military officers and politicians. As a result of this, Erdogan weakened the constitutional power of the military, destroyed the free media in the country, while also purging the bureaucracy. The AKP party also attacked several opponents which was seen as a threat, not only the Kurds within the HDP but also the Turkish nationalists, leftists and secularists. In 2017 a referendum was held to give the president, which at the time was Erdogan, more power. Even though the result was close, Erdogan won the referendum, which in theory gave him the power to control the budget, control the military, appoint own judges, dissolve the parliament and stay in power until at least 2029. A power which nobody in Turkey had had since Kemal Atatürk. During the war against ISIS, Erdogan didn't manage to live up to the expectations of the coalition. Within the ruling party, a view expanded of how Turkey should act to become the unquestionable leader of the Islamic world. Therefore, Turkey has made sure to keep its important allies with NATO, at least for a while, simultaneously as they are forging new allies in the West with both Iran, Syria, Iraq and Russia. In the last 10 years, Turkey has invested a lot of resources to bolster its national power in a number of countries, not at least countries within the Middle East and some parts of Africa, which shares religious and cultural ties with Turkey. Turkey has deployed military resources to Qatar, Somalia, Sudan, but also recently to Azerbaijan, Syria and Libya. Now, what we can conclude from the video so far that is important for the topic of this video is how the borders of the former Ottoman Empire actually looked, how Erdogan has taken the Turkish society to a more and more lookalike of the Ottoman society, and how Erdogan has secured himself in power for a great amount of time. Now let's look into a few other conflicts starting with Syria in 2014. ISIS was on the move in Syria and Iraq. Reports had come that Turkey was supporting the Islamic State behind closed doors but nobody really wanted to talk about it. By the way, if you want to see our in-depth review about the relationship between the Islamic State and Turkey, you can check that out by clicking the link in our description box. Anyway. Looking back at these days now, there is no doubt that Islamic State was working as a proxy army for the Turks. Let's look at what Brett McGurk, which were responsible for American national security and the coalition towards ISIS, has to say about Turkey. Look, I ran the ISIS campaign. 40,000 foreign fighters, jihadis from 110 countries around the world, all came into Syria to fight in that war, and they all came through Turkey. The caliphate was on the border of Turkey. We worked with Turkey. I was in Turkey more than any other country to have them seal their border, and they would not do it. They said they couldn't do it, but the minute the Kurds took parts of the border, it's totally sealed with a wall. So let's just be honest about the record. It is not the fact that we went with the YPG and told, told Turkey to sit in a corner. That's just not factual. What we actually know is that the Kurdish YPG forces defeated this proxy of Turkey, the Islamic State. Now, what was Turkey's answer to a defeated Islamic State? To get a new proxy army, of course, and to fight back against the YPG. After the total defeat of the Islamic State, the Turkish army, with support from their new proxy of Free Syrian Army, FSA, performed an invasion into northern Syria, invading Afrin in the beginning, but later on also Girispi and Serekani. And we all saw how pictures circulated of previous soldiers from the Islamic State, which now had joined the FSA forces and the Turkish armies. So, we now have Turkey invading and controlling some areas of northern Syria, which we also can see as previous parts of the Ottoman Empire. Let's listen to this speech where Erdogan talks about his future plans. Turkiye, Türkiye'den büyüktür. Bunu böyle bilin. Ve 
Yani biz 780 bin kilometre kareye hapsolamayız. Çünkü bizim fiziki sınırlarımız başkadır, gönül sınırlarımız bambaşkadır. <gülüyor> Musul'daki, Kerkük'teki, Haseke'deki, Halep'teki, Humus'taki, Mısrata'daki, Üsküp'teki, Kırım'daki, Kafkasya'daki kardeşlerimiz fiziki sınırlarımız dışında olabilir. Ama hepsi gönül sınırlarımızın içindedir, kalbimizin tam ortasındadır. Devlet ve millet tarihimizi 90 yılla sınırlandırmaya kalkanlara izin vermeyeceğiz. İlk öğretimden itibaren ki bunu ana, artık anaokullara diyoruz, itibaren ders kitaplarının bu çerçevede yeniden gözden geçirilmesi dahil milletimizi tarihiyle, kültürüyle, medeniyetiyle buluşturacak her türlü adımı süratle atmalıyız. And let's look at this part of this speech where he claims that the people of this area wants the Turks. Bugün gidin Suriye'ye, gidin Irak'a, gidin Kuzey Afrika'daki, Orta Doğu'daki, Balkanlardaki herhangi bir yere Oralardaki insanlara Türkiye ile Türk milleti ile ilgili kanaatlerini sorun. Hiçbir yerde sömürge gibi, işgal gibi, zulüm gibi, katliam gibi ifadeler duyamazsınız. Bunların yerine sadece artık bir sembol haline gelen vefalı Türk gelbiliğine teşekkür Bakınız size yaşanmış bir olayı nakledeyim. Makedonya'nın dağ köylerinden birine uzun uğraşlar sonunda ve çok zor şartlarda ulaşan Tika ekibinin yanına elindeki bastonuna yaslanarak yaşı hayli ilerlemiş bir ihtiyar yaklaşıyor. Aracın kapısının üzerindeki Türk bayrağını görünce bastonunun ucuyla Tika görevlisini dürterek niye bu kadar geç kaldınız diye soradı. Görevli şaşırdı. Programın birkaç gün gerisinde kaldıklarını sanarak durumu izah etmeye çalışırken ihtiyar sözünü kesip devam etti. Yüz yıldır sizi bekliyoruz. Evet, biz o coğrafyalardan ayrılalı bir asır oldu ama oradaki insanların bekleyişi, umudu hiçbir The Treaty of Lausanne, which Atatürk signed in 1923 and which seals the current borders of Turkey, is expiring in 2023. And there is no doubt that those supporting Erdogan, whether it is people inside or outside of Turkey, sees this year as the year when Turkey can expand and create a new nation. Let's listen to what this Islamic Imam has to say about the future of Turkey. Brother, the question that the Khilafa the last Khilafah we had a Khilafah Islam uh, Osmani and Turkey which was by the enemies of Islam they got together and they had it abolished and there were protests throughout the Muslim Ummah in 19, uh, 1924 and you forgot to mention there was a pact there was a pact by the enemies of Islam which made with Ataturk that for 100 years they cannot claim and that 100 years is going to end in the next five years. I think it's 1923, it's not 1924. So in 2023 or 2024, after five years, this pact between the enemies of Islam and Ataturk of Turkey is going to end. And we have one bold Muslim leader, the Erdogan, who's fighting with the odds and Alhamdulillah, we pray to Allah that may Allah support him. And the full world is against him. They tried a coup to remove him. Allah helped him. Alhamdulillah. And he's fighting against the Western world, being in Europe. 
that there is any change from the prime ministership to presidential ship and he won that and we leave it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray for him inshallah if the Muslim is again united in one banner but the problem is most of the Muslim countries would not want to be under one banner the problem is the Muslim if all the Muslims today two billion Muslims unite under one they will start thinking if he becomes the leader where will my seat go so I don't think so unfortunately for this reason, the recent occupation of different areas must be taken seriously because Erdogan is there to stay. And as we've just seen, he has threatened to take over even more places. In the speech we saw earlier, he talked about Mosul, Kirkuk, Hasaka, Aleppo, Homs, Misrata, Skopje and Krim. Now, if we would play with our thoughts and let Erdogan take over these places, that would also mean that he would control all of northern and western Syria, huge portions of northern Iraq, areas in Libya, areas in northern Macedonia and the Krim island which is located in Ukraine and Russia. This occupation would in time mean that Erdogan also would need clean routes to these areas and therefore we can start arguing about a potential occupation of Greece. Now, according to our sources in Greece, the Greek military has already changed their stance into high alert due to the recent moves by Turkey, where two warplanes fly above Greek islands in the 21th of July. And while the Christian cathedral of Hagia Sophia was reconstructed into a mosque, Turkish newspaper bragged about the change with these kinds of statements. Hagia Sophia is taken, let's go for Athens. And if you ask us, Greece should be worried. Documents unveiled by the Nordic Monitor illustrated Turkey's plans to invade Greece, something that has existed since at least June 13, 2014, under a codename of TSK. According to their exposure, there is a similar document that talks about the plans of invading Armenia too, and this one has existed since at least August 15, 2000. These classified documents were accidentally revealed for public viewing when an Ankara-based investigating prosecutor, Serdar Kuskun, loyalist of Turkish President Erdogan, forgot to remove the documents before submitting them to court. The documents included the invasion plans for Greece were found to have been exchanged among top military commanders. According to this memo, the secret plan to attack Armenia was finalized on July 13, 2001. It was prepared by the 2nd Tactical Air Force Command as part of the Okus Turk Air Offensive Plan of the Turkish Air Forces in order to complement the Turkish Armed Forces for an offensive against Armenia. The memo stated that the action plan was still valid. From here we can look at Armenia's neighboring country, Azerbaijan, east of Armenia. The people here are very pro-Turkish and in a full conflict between the two countries of Armenia and Azerbaijan, Armenia would be a target of a two-scale war from both Turkey and Azerbaijan. In fact, in the last month, Azerbaijan and Armenia has clashed several times outside the borders of Azerbaijanian Tuvus and Armenian Tavush. The conflict began on July 12 when an Azerbaijanian military jeep for unknown reasons attempted to violate the state borders of Armenia in the area of Armenian Tavush. After a warning by the Armenian side, the Azeri soldiers left the vehicle and returned to their positions. A little more than an hour later, Azerbaijani soldiers using artillery fire attempted to seize an Armenian outpost but were pushed back, taking casualties. However, there were no casualties on the Armenian side. Azerbaijan then began using some of the largest artillery on civilian populations since the four-day war in 2016. Armenian forces retaliated and gained new strategic positions known as Kharadash in anticipation of further Azeri provocations. According to several sources, Turkey is providing Azerbaijan with military and economic support to attack Armenia and even though Turkey haven't gone in with official forces yet, the proxy forces of Azerbaijan could be enough for Armenia to see this as a declaration of war. As if this wasn't enough, just a few weeks ago Erdogan commented on the situation with Cyprus, talking about a fair permanent solution on Cyprus that is only possible with the acceptance of equal status for Turkish Cypriots. Firstly, is this 
fair solution that Erdogan talks about, fair in his world or whose. Secondly, everyone watching this should know that there isn't anything called Turkish Cyprus, because back in 1974, when Turkey invaded Cyprus due to a nationalistic Greek coup to unite Cyprus with Greece, a lot of Turkish citizens were called on to move into Cyprus and become what Erdogan today calls Turkish Cyprus. In these times, over 500,000 people from Turkey moved into Cyprus at the time. And if we look at this ethnicity map, we can see how the Greek Cyprus still are a large majority of the island. So from here, let's look at the final part of this video, Libya. The country has since 2014 been in a civil war as the former dictator Gaddafi was removed from power. Since then, the country has gotten a UN-recognized government in Tripoli, ruled by Fayez al-Sarraj, while there is also the opposite side, led by Khalifa Haftar. The government in Tripoli is backed by Turkey, while the opposite side of Haftar is backed by Egypt. Now, as Turkey has been putting a lot of proxy FSA soldiers into Libya to secure their interest, Egypt a few days ago decided to put their army into eastern Libya. Experts all over the world can see a potential war come up between Egypt and Turkey. And while Turkey is securing their own interest as well as what we think potential land areas of a future Turkish empire, Egypt seems to want to secure their borders with Libya. Looking at the overview of all that is happening in and around Turkey, we have great reason to suspect a policy from Turkey that aims for reviving the Ottoman Empire sometime after 2023 when the Lausanne Treaty is expiring. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to follow us by subscribing to this channel and follow us on Instagram.